<sighs> what's up? What up? What's up? It's Wednesday. This is not my normal scheduled time to go live. Um, my normal time was on Fridays, um, late night after LRB. And then I kind of slid into the OFR um, time slot while their channel was down. And now that they are back and um, this spot was open, so I decided um, I wanted a earlier time slot than 1030. So this is where I'm going to be at from now on, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. I just got out of the shower. Today has been crazy. And um, I got a list of what I'm going to talk about tonight because I feel like that works out pretty well for me. And um, yeah, so let me grab this list and I'm sure people will file in a little bit later. But this is not my normal scheduled time. Let's see who's here already. Recon, what's going on, man? Hope all is well for you. I feel like I just live streamed because it's been a few days. Matt's Monster Fish. What's going on, buddy? So, um, Matt's Monster Fish. He's also a semi-local guy to me. He's like an hour, hour and a half from me. He's here in Ohio. He also frequents Ohio Fish Rescue. Um, I've met him. Uh, that's where I met him at was Ohio Fish Rescue. And we've hung out a few times up there now. He's a good dude. And Ohio Fish Rescue is actually the first thing on my list to talk about tonight. Um, like I said, they are back online. Um, Tracy's still in the hospital. They have videos that will be coming out. Um, they schedule videos to release. And they, they'll keep populating out now that they have their channel back. I don't have any current information. Um as far as what's Tracy's condition, the last I heard, um, she had a little bit of a setback and was having some bleeding problems. Um, that's the last I've heard, so I don't know anything other than that. Uh, Tiffany White's here. Hi, Tiffany. I hope all is well with you. Um, cool thing with OFR, uh, Matt says we need to go back. Man, good memories. Yeah, it was a fun time there. Um, every time I go up there, it's a fun time, so... Hopefully the next time I go up there, um, Tracy will be there. But um, yeah, I think we need to do try to get Josh and everybody just to do a, a chill night there. You know, maybe maybe make it a night where you know we go help them move something, but we can all hang out and have a good time. Uh, Zen Ginger's here. Hello, hello. Um, so it's been a busy day. Um, a lot went on today. It started with I got a new phone and that was a process of trying to move all my contacts over and all that stuff. And then I had to re log into like all my apps, like it automatically downloaded my apps, but I had to re log into everything. So that that took up some time. But I got a new phone. It's working. And with that, I got new products today. Um, it's a whole new vendor. I picked up Phoenix. And I fully wanted Phoenix just for the Stingray lights. Um, after previous live streams and talking to people, um, like through Facebook Messenger mainly, um, the Fluval 3.0 is a really, really, really good light. But people want something that's uh, on the lower end of the light spectrum as far as you know output, something that's more affordable. And the Stingray like ticks all those boxes. And I really want to actually give a shout out to Phoenix because once I got the whole uh, account set up with them, I placed my initial order and they had it shipped out within like an hour of me placing it. Um, and they packaged everything really well from all my wholesalers and everybody I buy products from Phoenix so far has had the best packaging um, instead of, you know, filling the box full of those air, um, pouches or the crate paper, they take up the negative space with like empty boxes. So they have like a recycled box that they got and they, you know, cut it to fit. So there's no movement at all. So it was, it was really cool. I sent them an email to like give them kudos on that. I, I, you know, I told them what I just said, like out of all my wholesalers, 
you guys have the best shipping. So I just want to give them a shout out for that. But I brought on the Stingray LEDs. Um, I brought on every single size. So it's the clip-on, um, 12 inch, 16 inch, 20, 24, 30, 36, and 48 inches. Um, I brought them all on. They're all in stock. I put them on the website after work today. Um, so that kept me busy and unloading all those boxes. Um, while I ordered those, I also ordered their um, power filter, which is uh, this guy right here. This is a PF5. This is the model. They have a PF7 now. And it's the same filter, but now they include a intake sponge. So the intake tube, they actually have a sponge that goes over it now. Um, and I thought that was really cool. I didn't even know it was a new model until I got the box and I saw the picture of the sponge filter. I'm like, huh, they're hot riding their own filter now. That's pretty cool. So I think what they did is they, they saw that the hobby was adding intake sponge filters to the hang on back filter. And they decided to just include it, um, in the cost of the filter now. Um, so I thought that was really cool. So I brought those on, I brought on, they have little replacement cartridges, and normally I'm a fan of hot rotting filters versus like with sponge, so you can re wash and reuse it versus um, replacing a cartridge, you know, all the time. Phoenix recommends replacing it once a month. I brought on the extra cartridges. It's like a two pack for I think it's like three bucks, three or four bucks. But the reason why I replace it is because the carbon with such a small tank, that's a four gallon tank. Um, I really want the water polished. So the carbon helps with that. So I'm replacing it. And it's just like a little cartridge. I'm replacing it just so I can have that fresh carbon in there. And then honestly, it comes with like a little piece of sponge. You could put a decent size in that. And um, I just, I haven't done it. It's been working great for me. I've, ha I've had that for... I don't know, maybe one of you guys know how long I've had that. I would say maybe a year. I forget how long I've had it. I want to say a year. Last last summer or spring, maybe. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. So I liked it. I brought it on. What was the other thing? Uh, the breeder box. So I did a video. I don't think it released yet about using hang on breeder boxes and how I use it for um, basically using it as like added filtration and using it to grow plants on a tank where the, it's my axolotl tank. They won't allow me to grow anything that's small and fragile. So I want to put moss on in that tank. And um, so I'm using a breeder box. Well, while filming and setting it all up, um, the flow is just super low. It's a trickle. It's like drip, drip, you know. And I have a marina hang on filter out in my fish room. And that one flows a little bit more. It's still low flow. But um, anyways, the Phoenix now comes with a water pump. So you can buy their box and you can hook it up to air if you want real low flow. Let's say you have like a, a beta that you're adding onto the side of an aquarium. So say this was like a bigger aquarium, I could get that breeder box and hang it on the side and put a beta in it. Cause I think it's like, it might be almost a gallon worth of capacity. And you can use the airline for the low flow for that. Or you can put this water pump on it, comes with it and have high flow. So um, I brought on those too. I brought on, I think, I think I have 12 of those. I, I didn't know how well they would do, so I only brought on 12. The other breeder boxes um, that I brought on the other week, those are all sold out. And I don't plan on bringing those back on because I like this Phoenix one better because it comes with the water pump. So if you want the high flow, you can have it. Hey, Charlotte. I haven't paid any attention to the dogs yet, so they'll probably be in here a lot. And um, Or she's looking for food. I don't, I don't have no food. I just ate a bowl of oatmeal. Um, I took a shower and that's what I had time for. So the other thing, and the whole reason I did this, the Phoenix breeder boxes is that in the last live stream or yeah, it was the last live stream. 
I was asking people what they wanted to see as far as products for online and people were saying breeding things. Um, it was mentioned like botanicals and stuff like that. So I hear you guys. I wrote everything down. Uh, the other thing was caves. So I've been looking for Pleco caves. I know what Pleco caves I want. I'm just trying to find a good supplier of them. Um, a lot of people are getting them through um, China. And I was trying to find someplace in the States that wasn't crazy expensive. But unfortunately, everything's crazy expensive when it's made in the USA. Um, so I'm still working on caves. Um, alder cones and um, leaves. I have leaves. I have them. Um, they're just ginormous. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to package them. I might just, I like to do things really neat, but I think I might just bite the bullet and package them into a Ziploc bag so I can get them out. Um, Zen says, shared on Discord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me uh, let me catch up on the chat real quick. I see a lot going on. What do we have? 18 people, awesome. Uh, HC Aqua is here, hello. Uh, Chevy Fish, hello, hello. Rumball's Fish Room, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Rumble says, I have, I've only used a couple of uh, hang-on bags. I've never actually bought the cartridges, always made my own sponge. So when I was, like, in middle school and elementary school and I had, like, an aqua clear. Um, I always bought the replacements. I didn't know any better. If I had an aqua clear, I would probably just do a sponge insert. I would probably just buy like a metallum, not metallum mat, but um, reticulated, open cell reticulated um, foam and just cut my own or buy media pads, stuff like that. This stuff is way cheaper. But um, with this guy being such a small filter and some, such a small tank, um, I think adding like a bulk carbon to it would be kind of a hassle. So I think adding a big piece of sponge, cause there's, it comes with cotton carbon and that's like in one cartridge and then a sponge, a piece of sponge, but they actually leave you a lot more room so you can really add more media to this thing. I think I would probably add um, maybe ceramic rings or a big piece of sponge. And then I probably would still change out that cartridge just because it's got like the poly filter and carbon in one. And um, I, I don't know if I would do it every month um, or I'd recommend doing it every month. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to say because Phoenix recommends it every month. Granted, they're trying to sell replacement cartridges, but like three bucks, they're not, they're not getting rich off three bucks. So, I mean, honestly, that's not even... I get them cheaper than that. That's, you know, what I would be selling them for. So they're not getting rich selling replacements off, you know, for those. But they're available. Uh, let me see what else is up in here. Reels tanks here. And it's lurking. Cody sends here and says, we need six more likes. Please hit the like, y'all. Thanks. Awesome, bud. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm going to get back to my list. So... The Pleco Caves, Alder Cones. Alder Cones, I'm still trying to work out um, a decent wholesale deal with that. Um, moss Tree. Somebody wanted a Moss Tree, and I honestly I haven't gotten to it yet. It's on my list of things to do, and I will get to it. I promise. Do-do-do. Uh, Okay, so here's where I did get as far as like botanicals. So however you say it, I say cholo wood. Um, you could say chala wood, I guess. Um, that's like, uh, I have some in my shrimp tanks. I've always just bought them from the local store because it was super easy. I have a supplier. USA trees or the not trees but the cactus plant wherever it's from usa usa everything it's grown in the usa it's harvested um by usa workers it's cleaned here everything doesn't leave the country um i was all about that and i have an account set up with them i put in my initial order 
and they are working on oh so i guess i mentioned the size so you the typical size is like the six inch pieces that you know most of this, like my lfs has like the six inch they also have it in 12 inch pieces and so i ordered those and the six inch um pricing choya is it choya i don't know how do you guys pronounce it um sidetracked so yeah so six and 12 inches i ordered both sizes um the 12 inch they i think the guy said that they had to harvest or just clean them still i think they just have to clean them because they clean everything you can get it cleaned or uncleaned like natural or clean i was like i'd rather have them clean that way there's no like dirt or contaminants or anything on it so i wanted them clean so i think that's all they have to do is clean them still so i expect i'll have an email back from him hopefully next week or by next week and uh, get those here so i'm excited for those especially the 12 inch pieces um, most of them are six that i always see at least locally and that's what i have in all my tanks so once i saw the the 12 inch ones i was like let's get those in so that's and they have two different varieties i don't have the sheet here um one's way more expensive than the other chevy fish says choya 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 okay choya i always said chala choya i'll forget that i'm gonna try to work on that choya choya Zen says she's only ever seen the small ones. Yeah, so I think the 12-inch ones would be cool because at that point, because like in my tanks, they're just laying in the bottom. But I think with like a 12-inch um, piece of choya wood, you could um, use that for some aquascaping too. What's the other one? TDS meters. So I bought TDS meters a long time ago, and I brought them in in bulk. And the problem was none of them came with batteries. So I never, I never, <laughs> I just got distracted. Hi and bye, Charlotte. Yeah, she's going to be coming in here a lot probably. Um, I never listed the TDS meters online because I wasn't going to sell them without batteries. I, I didn't think it would be fair to have to buy your own batteries when you just want to use the thing. So I never listed it. And... There was no specs. They're like the tiny little pin batteries, They're like coin cells, but tiny. And um, they didn't list the specs of what size I needed. And finally, it was on my to-do list. And I finally got to that on my list. And I used my whoops, um, micrometer and or digital caliper and figured out what size I needed, bought them, and I had to sit there and put batteries into everything. But they all have batteries. The pictures are done. I used the photo box, and I took pictures of them all. I just got to get them listed on the website. So that's another product that will be up hopefully soon. Tomorrow and Friday is going to be crazy. Um, Saturday is the Cafe Swap Meet. It's in Columbus, Ohio. It's free for the public to come. Um, basically, you can buy a table to sell your goods. If you're a member, it's 20 bucks a table. If you're a non-member of the club, you can still buy a table to sell your stuff, and I think it's 30 bucks. Um, if you're in the central Ohio area, come check it out. It's from noon to 3, and I just bought a second table today. I bought one table and decided I wanted two. Um, so I bought two tables, and I will be there. Um, selling goods. I don't plan on taking any fish or shrimp. Um, we'll see about that. I originally was going to take my the cichlids I have just to get rid of them, and because I don't plan on doing any kind of breeding projects with them. But um, I have somebody that messaged me about them, and I think is going to buy them all. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm going to take like the Phoenix lights, the Fluval lights, sponge filters. I'll probably take the TDS meters probably Python products, like stuff, stuff that people want for their fish room. 
So if you're in the area, swing by, come say hi to me. Bring me some coffee if you would, because I'm sure I'll want it. Um, but yeah, it's noon to three. And it's um, in Hilliard. It's on the west side of Columbus. So that was on here. What else? What else? Let me get back to the chat. Recon says, just watch your most recent video, Mr. B. Good stuff. Um, I caught that video as well. Um, it was, stands look really good. And you can't buy a tank to think you're going to flip it because you're just going to add it to your basement, or to your fish room. You know that's just going to happen. Got 19 people in here now. Nice. Uh, let's see what else has we got in here. Pat's Fish Tanks is here. Hello, everyone. Coming from Fish Tubers Notifications. Hopefully, everyone's doing all right. Um, it's been a busy day, Pat's Fish Tanks. I hope all is well with you. Zen says, mm, coffee, yes. I was actually going to make a cup. I don't have any decaf, and I thought it was probably a bad idea because um, I'm really tired. So I feel like after live streaming, I can probably hop in bed and pass out, and we'll see. We'll see if the dogs will allow me to do that tonight. Um, something else with the OFR. I had a note on here. Um, I've been talking to Josh. I might be supplying them with um, some substrate for one of their tanks. I don't want to say anything other than that because I don't know if they're going to be doing a video on it. I'm sure they'll be doing a video on it. Um, but they're redoing one of the, the big tanks and, um, I might be supplying them with all the substrates for that. So that'd be super awesome to, um, work with them on that. And if you can imagine substrate in any of their tanks, no matter which tank it is, it's a lot of substrate. So, um, I gave them a really good hookup on everything and hopefully I'm, I'm just basically waiting to hear back about freight. Because it's going to be a truckload of substrate. Pat's fish tanks. It's 2.22 a.m. here. So I'm pretty tired. Where are you from, Pat? 2.22. I, hopefully, I'll, I'll be asleep by then. I'm trying to think. I, I kind of want to get those TDS meters on the website now that I'm thinking about it. But I think the pictures are on my old cell phone. I gotta see if they transfer it over to my new phone. If not, I'll have to take some new pictures. You scroll up. Zen says she was the one that wanted a moss tree. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. It's here. Reminds me every time I get on my computer, it's it's right here. I need to do the moss tree. So this is this kind of reminds me of now that we we were talking about um, choya wood, choya wood trunk with moss on top. That might be a thing. Maybe a bunch of them, like in a fifty-five, a tall tank that's got a, like a smaller footprint, a bunch of twelve-inch um, choya wood. Standing straight up with moss on top to make it look like a, a forest. That might be kind of cool. Pet. I'm living in Denmark. Soon I'm leaving for the airport. That's why I'm awake. Cool to watch fish soup, though. Pat, appreciate you uh, stopping by. Uh, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. You got to throw that out there. I don't think I... Well, at least not in chat. I've never had anybody from Denmark, I don't think. Down the wormholes here. Hello. Let's see. What else is here? <laughs> Cody said, are you, are you a mod on my channel? Maybe I should just make you a mod. Let's do that. 
All right, Kelly, so you're our moderator since I always see you trying to get people to hit the like button and all that fun stuff. Might as well make you a mod so you get that little wrench. What kind of moss would you use? So I primarily, well, actually all my moss is um, Christmas moss. I can grow it pretty crazy. Um, it just tends to do really well for me. So I've been growing it out. Zen says, Stephen, I got several plants in and I forgot to plant them for a week. Uh-oh. They're all melty and thin stemmed now in rock wool pots, Nubius Bodderi, and Crip Wendetti. Okay, so luckily those two are pretty hardy. That's what I run a lot. I have a lot of Anubius and a lot of Crip Wendetti. Um, hopefully they, you forgot to plant them. So were they like just chilling in the shipping bags, I'm assuming? Oh, wait, here's another message. I put them in a five-gallon by themselves. I'm not sure if I should add any fruits to leave the line 24 hours or what to order to hopefully revive what's left. Um, do you have a tank you can put them in? I would probably just put them in with a fish tank um, so that way they're getting nitrates from the water from the fish. Um, probably you don't need to fertilize them because if they're, if they're melted back hard, um, Pumping them for fertilizer probably won't do much for them right now. Um, depending on how bad they are, you know, they might not recover. But I would leave them in the rock wool and put those into a tank with fish. And um, see what they do. Uh, she says, yes, from the co-op in fabric bags in a cool room. I probably put them in a fish tank. And um, leave them in their pots and see what happens. Uh, Nubius is very slow. And so when I did the axolotls, the axolotl tank's non-heated. It's a cold water tank. So it's probably like mid-60s. And I pulled plants out of my fish room, which here is mid-70s. And the Nubius melted back hard. Um, but I'm just leaving it. And it's, it's already sprouting new growth. The problem with the Nubius is it's such a slow grower. Um, I can get mine to grow pretty fast in the flow through system, but it's pumped full of nitrates. That that system, like where those tanks sit, run probably 40 parts per million in nitrates. Um, and it runs under 24 hour lighting like you're, you just mentioned. But with a plant that's melted, I don't know if 24 hour lighting will help you or not. But I would definitely just throw them in a, a fish tank. Um, I think a clean water tank with fertilizers isn't going to really help. I would put it in something that is. Um, can I just water change and add that water to the five gallon? Um, yeah, so you could. Any water that you pull out of your fish tanks, you could just fill that. If that's like a quarantine tank, basically kind of like what it sounds like. Um that's what I would do. Use the dirty fish water. Um, basically, you're recycling that water. So instead of going straight down the drain, you're using that to feed the plants. Uh, that's what I would do. And I love Anubius. And I love the Crips. So the Crips were actually the, the Wendetti was the first one that I got of a Crypt. And I love it. Uh, Zen says, yeah, it's a QT tank. Yep, definitely um, just use the fish water. And I probably, do you have like test strips or a um, master kit? I would probably test it because if it's a seasoned tank and your filtration is good on that tank, you might not even have nitrates in that water anyways. So I would see if you have nitrates. Pat says, worst thing I've experienced with Anubius is blackbeard algae. And horrible stuff and impossible to get out of those large leaves. So I've only ever had blackbeard algae once, and it was in 
my guppy 30 gallon tank and it was actually on um my pogo um pogo stemmons the lot is octopus if i said that all right um I just call it the Pogo Octopus. It was in that, and it was actually when LRB was here at my house, and that's when I also had a sweet potato growing in that tank. I saw people were using the sweet potatoes. I wanted to try it. Worked awesome, by the way. That thing grows like crazy, but um, after a while, I think with the low flow of that tank, and then I think, I don't know if that potato started like dying off, like the plant was already consuming all of the nutrients out of the potato and I don't know, but it, um, Oh, maybe it was the root structure. So the potato plant makes a really fine root structure. And I think with the low flow, it's what caused it. So I ended up just pulling my potato plant out and cutting off a piece of the pogo where the black beard was. And that was it. I never had a problem after that. Um, but that tank's also got, probably a dozen Amano shrimp in it and they keep everything pretty clean. <laughs> Zen says, I do have test kits. I'll see which tank is the best slash worst and use that water 17 tanks, not including little QT. So I have options. Um, yeah. So test them and see whichever one runs the highest nitrates. And I would use that water. And then, um, Go from there. And if all your tanks are set up to where they're not running nitrates, and if they're planted, you need to start dosing fertilizers. Um, the, the rule of thumb is 20 parts per million on your nitrates if you're planted. And then if you're a little bit more experienced, you can shoot for a little bit higher than that. But I think the general rule of thumb is 20 parts. And I said earlier, I run 40 parts in my um, flow through. But that's like in the sumps, the sumps run 40 parts because they're, they have all the tank water from above. So it's 40 parts going in. And I can, I can tell by the duckweed when I need to fertilize or not, because when there's a ton of nitrates, the duckweed takes off. Um, when it's not taking off, then I know the nitrates are pretty low. Uh, Pat says, yeah, flow usually works well to prevent it. Now when all my tanks are properly aged, not having that issue anymore. Yeah, I, I feel like age, it's one of those things where you, you just know when your tank's aged. My 30 gallons definitely aged. My rack system one tanks are all aged. And I feel like rack system two, my flow through, I feel like it's like that mature tank coming up on age i wouldn't call those aged yet but they're there they're getting there <laughs> zen says i'm a slacker a lot i guarantee i have 20 parts per million somewhere you never know i mean you you never know if you got a planted tank and you got a sponge filter on it and it's not overloaded on stock you might have nothing in it Planted tanks, like having plants in your tanks does wonders for that. That's why I, I got into the breeder boxes for um, the axolotl tank. And also, I want to do it on my 75-gallon goldfish tank. I would really love to, like, put this goldfish somewhere else and do a full scape on the 75 and um, go to town on that. Uh, let me scroll back up. We have 25 people in here. That might be the most... I, don't, I never really keep track. That might be the most live streams I've had so far. Most um, viewers, I mean. Let's see. Aquatic Moz here. Hello. Carrie Nature. Howdy, howdy. Uh, Carry nature. I'm battling cloudy water and fairly new tank. Didn't help a female drop fry the day after I got them. The tank wasn't ready for all that life quite yet. 
Um, is it like a bacteria bloom? My flow through was, so here was the problem with the flow through. Um, I overdosed nitrates. This was a few months ago. Um, overdosed fertilizer. Got a green water bloom. Um, finally got that under control. And then I was getting more bacteria blooms without dosing anything. And then I, um, the reason I found that is one of the cichlids died behind a rock, didn't see it, and um, it pumped a ton of ammonia into the system. Carrie Nature, sounds like you need some 614 fry food in your life. <laughs> Taylor's Aquatic, how do, Steven? Hey, Bob, how's it going? Hope all is well with you, bud. <laughs> Aquatic Mon says, was listening, how to build a transformer for a three-year-old. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Every once in a while, I'm talking every few years, I'll be at the grocery store and I go through, it's probably like when I'm buying like a toy for my nephews or something like that. And I pass the Lego section. And every time I stop and I look at all the Legos, and I think, which one do I want to buy? Because 33 years old, I will still buy a Lego set to build it. And Carrie says, oh, I do. Just a little broke from having to get a new computer. I feel you. I got a new phone today, and phones are, are not cheap at all. And I'm terrible when it comes to phones because I, I don't like buying, like, a low-end model because I feel like if I'm going to spend the money, I hate to buy one and then be like, man, I really wish I would just spend the extra $100 and got, like, the nicer model. Um, so I ended up with a nice model, and it was a ton of money. But I figure I can use it to – it's got better cameras than my old phone, so I figure I can use it. Um, to record videos because I use a, I use my phone a lot to make videos um, between my phone and the GoPro. I use my phone the most. And um, so I thought it would be an investment. Uh, Carrie's doing water changes and watching it. Uh, quite a while. I do have issues with green water. It's been a month now. I try heavier water changes, less light, less food, but to no look. look. So I have one tank. I'm trying to think how many tanks I have now. I think I have 45 tanks. Um, I have one that's green water, and it's a shrimp tank. It's only got shrimp. And I think the green water started from that tank was near natural sunlight. It's in the fish room, and it was getting natural sunlight on top of having a light on it. I think it created green water, and it's just permanently in there. It's it's not like a um, – it's not an algae – like bloom because it's, it's a shrimp tank and I don't feed the tank like heavily, but, um, and it's also planted. Uh, I don't know if I say planted, it's, it's got plants in it, but it's, it's not heavily planted. It's got, um, dwarf aquarium lilies in it and some Christmas moss. But anyways, it's green water. It's heavy green water. You can't see t it's a 55. So I'm trying to think how deep a 55 is. Anybody know the depth of 55? It's, you know, they're not that deep. Maybe a foot, um, 15 inches. You can't see the back of the tank, but you can see it's my blue shrimp. And you can see all the blue shrimp swimming, like, across the glass. But I just left it. I didn't try changing it out. I was hoping to see if it would go away. But from what I understand, you can try doing, like, 100% water change. Um, but I guess with green water, once it gets into the substrate, it's just kind of there. So you have to do... Um, Heavy water changes with heavy gravel vacuum. But um, green water, green water is great for fry and fish. You just it's not great to look at. But um, my pond outside last summer went green water, and I had the craziest growth of um, my guppies that were out there. They spawned four times more than my guppies in my fish room. 
So yeah, four times. I have four batches of fry. Like they're inside for the winter. I had like four different sizes and they dropped fry four times compared to um, what I had in my fish room. Uh, Carrie says, I don't mind good green water. It's cyanobacteria, so blue green algae um, and bacteria blooms. So I had blue green in my flow through rack when I first started. Um, it was kind of like a new tank syndrome type deal. And I treated it with, what did I use? Marison and ram's horns. Um, I read, read or saw someone's video online said, Snails don't touch it. Uh, that was a lie. I, my ram's horns plow through it. They they ate it. And if I would have known that people were saying that snails won't touch it, I wish I would take a video of it because you could clearly see where the snails were going through it. So I don't know. It's weird. Um, got rid of it then, and it never came back. And then I got it in my salt water tank, and it's like not blue green algae it's like red green algae it might not be the same thing but i had basically the salt water version the red slime and that was a mess to deal with and luckily i no longer have a salt tank as of last weekend i sold off the rest of my salt water fish in that tank it's currently being nuked it's got bleach running through it right now um it's been in bleach water for since last Saturday or Sunday. That's just to kill off anything. And then I'm going to fresh water, filter through it multiple times. Obviously, get bleach out and whatnot. And then a, it's a Fluval C. So it's like 14 and a half gallons, something like that. Um, it's a nice tank, but I want to set it up as a shrimp tank. It's on my kitchen island and it's set up kind of like a peninsula. So you can view the tank from three different sides, the way it's set up in my kitchen. So um, I want to do a scape with shrimp in it. So I'm thinking of doing my blue shrimp and um, maybe some wood that's coming up out of the water. It's a rimless tank and um, see what else I can do with it. But I just was not enjoying the salt water tank. It's just too much work. Uh, Carrie says, I need ram's horns. I tried nearite snails for some algae. And it won't stay in the tank to eat it. Uh, it's in a hospital tank now with the lid on. I don't know what to do with it. So I have nearites. I have um, zebras and tigers. Um, I have them in pretty much all my tanks. I also sell them. They're great, though, at eating algae because they have, like, the teeth on them is what I call them. Um, they got these, like... If you get a picture or look at them up close, you can see them actually scraping the glass. And they're great, but they do like um, staying on the top. And in my wholesale tank, the one that has like 30 of them, they'll just be lined around the top of the tank um, up against the plastic rim. So I keep the water level specifically lower in those tanks. Um, I have had one get out, and I found them on the floor uh, when I got home from work, so I put him back in the tank, and he ended up being fine. But, um, yeah, so, Nerits are great. Um, I sell ram's horns. I populate the crap out of them. I have them listed, like, I think it's, like, 10 for 5 bucks. But I usually end up selling or sending, like, 30. Um, I just grab, like, a whole net full of them and send them out. But Rams, Rams horns are great. I also have rabbit snails. I don't, rabbit snails are not, they're more of a, like a pet. Like they clean, but they're not powerhouses like Rams horns or uh, Neurites. They're cool to look at though. But I think I have those on the website too. Uh, Pam's here. Hey, Pam. Hope all is well with you. Let me scroll up and see where we're at. Of 
aquatic mosses. I had a high nitrate issue two weeks ago. Not now, zero ammonia, which to me doesn't sound right. It's a dirt tank with a sand cap. Let me scroll up. Uh, Zen said that like, this was when I was talking about Legos. She said, my girls are recently into standard size Legos. So much fun to build with them, but so much pain when they leave them on the floor. Yes. It's a true story. Tom Patterson says, TV show on Lego build competition. So I saw the ad for that. I think, I think it was like during the Super Bowl. And then when I was on Hulu the other night, I saw it's on Hulu. So I definitely want to watch that. Um, Tom, I don't know. If you watch it, let me know how it is. It looked pretty cool. I'm scrolling. I had to read up to see what everybody was talking about. And Zen says, watch out for the Barbie shoes. Chevy Fish said, at a quiet well, I'll try to find some live Daphnia. It will clear it up fast. Uh, Zen said 55 is 21 inches tall. Tom said 20. I was talking about like the depth, like how deep the tank is when you're looking like at the front panel because <laughs> they're not that deep. Uh, Quagma says, usually when a bloom happens, I see at least 25 ammonia. And that's why I say it's weird to me, but maybe I'm thinking too hard on this. So uh, somebody on, I don't know if it was our club page or one of the fish groups posted, if possible, try a different um, test kit too. Somebody had three test kits of the liquid varieties, like a master test kit, three test kits checking nitrates and all three were different colors, same water, everything. And um, all three were different colors. So that's shown that they were different um, levels. Um, Chevy Fish says, won't bleach compromise the integrity of the sealant? Um, I'm not too sure about the sealant. I think for sure on the seals of the pump, it's got a water pump built into it. Um, bleach will eat up a rubber seal for sure. Um, I actually ran into this issue with my toilets in my house. Um, I was using those Clorox bleach tablets that you drop into like the back of the tank and it helps like keep like water stains and stuff are happening in the toilet bowl. Um, after like a year or so of using them, it actually degraded the seal inside the tank to where it was making the water run. Like it started off like you'd hear the tank run for a second and then it would turn off. Like just the water level was like dropping just enough. And then after a while it was like to the point where I'm like, all right, this thing's using a lot of water, I'm sure throughout the day. So I took the seals out and they were just cracked and like fell apart. And um, I read online that um, bleach will do that to rubber. Gary's Aquatics is here. Hello. Carrie uh, asks, do pea puffers like them? And I think you must be referring to um, the ram's horns. 
yes, that's what I feel. And that's their, um, basically their primary diet as far as snails go. They populate so quickly in my tanks, it's a great food source for them. And they eat either blood worms or the ram's horns. I'd rather feed them ram's horns because it's way easier for me because the ram's horns will like congregate in the, like the top corners of the tanks. And I can just like take my hand in there and scoop out a handful, drop them into the pea puffer tank. And um, super easy versus like letting blood worms thaw out. But um, they do get blood worms. And ram's horns is how I actually got them um, eating originally. They wouldn't take blood worms. I had to basically train them onto it. And by that, I mean I had to starve them for like a week of no snails before they would eat blood worms. I put blood worms in it before, and the blood worms would just sink to the, the bottom, and they would never touch it. And then, um, so starving them for a week put some blood worms in there and they just attacked it. And then now they eat blood worms, no problem. But yeah, ram's horns, that's their, um, that's my go-to to feed them. Especially since I have so many and it's a free food source. <laughs> and I just saw your other comment. It says, I mean, if I end up with too many, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great food source for feed puffers. Pea puffers are great though, because I use them to quarantine plants. So whenever I move um, plants from a tank that had snails in it, I just put the plants in the pea puffer tank. And I let them sit in there for a few weeks, just in case there's eggs on that plant. Um, the eggs will hatch out into snails, and then the pea puffers will eat them. Zen asks, Stephen, can you get your hands on mangroves? I need some for a brackish tank. Well, I can look that up. And to be honest, I haven't seen them on my wholesale list, but I wasn't really looking for them. Um, let me get into my mail. I get sent a list once a week from one of my wholesalers of what's available. Now I just need to find that list. Maybe. All right, I found it. It's loading. I will see about the mangroves, though. Uh, Zen responded 12 inches deep. Foot wide. Pam says, or Pat says, unfortunately, I have to call it four. I have to call it four. I'm assuming that means you got to take off. But, um, Pat, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But you'll probably be asleep. <laughs> GRB is here. Hello, GRB. I don't know if I saw you earlier. Oh, I saw you... Um, Say something about betas. That's something else. Chevy says same thing. Uh, wait a minute. Where you go? My chat jumped on me. Uh, same thing happened here with the bleach in my toilet tank. Totally warped the rubber gasket. Yeah, it destroyed the rubber gasket on my tank and what's crazy is i didn't realize how cheap toilets are like under 100 bucks for a whole toilet um i have like this fancy like multiple buttons um, i thought it was I, my house was like remodeled when i bought it it was a flip house and it, so they put like it had all new fixtures in it and it had like two buttons on top and it's labeled number one number two and it's like oh I get it. Take a number one, you press that button. You take a number two, you press that. And it, it all that is is how much water it uses. Um, but I couldn't find the seal for that tank. For the, it's where the tank like met the bottom. And I couldn't find the seal. It was getting to the point where I was like, man, I might have to buy a whole new toilet. And it was like a hundred bucks. 
well, shoot, if the thing's only 50 bucks for the seal, I might as well just buy a new one and not have to worry about any of the other seals. But I ended up finding a seal. Um, somebody else had this issue, and on Google, I found it. They found a part number to a different brand, and it's the same seal. Okay, mangroves. Let me look. Let me look. don't remember seeing them, so I'm doubting that they have it. I don't even think they had, um, what's the other one? Not mangroves. Um, why can't I think of it? The plant that grows like a foot a freaking month type deal. Um, why can't I think of that? My neighbor had it. It's invasive here. It spreads like crazy. Let me see. Let me catch it up. Gary's Aquatics. Anybody in the Cleveland, Ohio area that wants to buy a 55 or 50 bucks? Um, no, but Gary, just say no. You're in the... Ohio area, there's the Cafe Swap Meet on Saturday. Um, I will be there with two tables. If you are bored, you are welcome. It's free to anybody. You don't have to be a member of the Cafe Club. But, um, yeah, should be a good time. <laughs> number one and number two at the same time. It does the same thing. Pam needs a three button. So, Carrie said, never thought of that. Mind you, right now, I like the hitchhikers. Um, I don't, I love, it's weird. I love ram's horns. They populate like crazy, right? I hate pest snails, like pond snails or um, maybe bladder snails. I don't know. There's something about ram's horns I love. I think they look awesome, especially because, like, they, they throw, like, red ones and pink ones and then, like, the common kind of like brownish ones. The majority are pink, but um, they just, I think they look better than a pond snail. You need a duckweed button as well. Pam, you need all sorts of buttons. And by the way, I didn't see anything on here about mangroves. I will have to check. Um, um, honestly, Zen, I, I, let's see. Brackish plants, brackish water. Are you doing like mud skippers? It's kind of like a, a lot of people I think are doing those recently. I'm trying to think of what you would have in brackish, like a figure eight puffer, maybe. Let me scroll up and see if I see where you said anything. I don't even see. Wait a minute. There we go. Um, Yes, mud skippers. So I've never had a brackish tank, so I don't even know what's compatible with brackish water. Um, I'm not the person to be asking about plants for that. Um, maybe Zenzo. I know he's got mud skippers. Unfortunately, I don't have any experience to where I can give you a recommendation. I'd be the blind leading the blind on that. But, yeah, uh, maybe duckweed. Maybe Pam's duckweed button put some duckweed in. Because I'm sure duckweed would somehow survive in a brackish tank. Because no matter what I do, it's always in mine. 
I'm sure it would survive bleach. I'm doing a search for brackish plants because I'm just curious. Four brackish. All right, so this is the first Google result. Four brackish water plants for the aquarium. Number one, Java fern. Doesn't surprise me. It's pretty hardy. Number two, an Anubias plant. Yes. I can see that. Anubius is like very strong. Number three, S uh, Sago Pondweed. Is that like duckweed? It's, it's probably duckweed, but they call it pondweed for brackish. Uh, Cryptocorn Wendetti is brackish. It says, it says only tolerant of mild salinity. It's an old brackish aquarium favorite. Crypts are usually found naturally in swampy jungle streams. Saying it's not too demanding, this common species does prefer... A fertile substrate such as sea chem, uh, natural fluorite substrate. It's happy at tropical or subtropical temperatures. And I can attest to that because it's grown in my axolotl tank. Punchy Paints has to go. Pam, we'll see you later. Oh, it's 9 o'clock. Who's... I need to check the fish tubers notification. I don't know who's the 9 o'clock. Does anybody know who's on at 9? I can't type. Dan's Fish. Okay. Everybody, let's go over Dan's Fish. I will hop over into his live stream for a minute. Thank you all for watching. And um, I'll see you next Wednesday, 8 p.m. But thanks, guys, once again for hanging out with me. Um, let's go over to Dan's Fish. See ya. Don't want to be you, but see you guys. Thank you all. I see everybody saying thanks. Thank you.